I'm going to be showing you how to do uh, a picture in picture using your two videos in uh, Ceres Movie Plus Starter Edition, their free version. When you open it, it looks like this. I was already over here in the Learn section. Um, now the Learn section is, is for the real one, kind of, but down here they have the audio techniques. And so if you click on it, you have to be connected to the internet. Whoops. I closed it up again. Anyway, audio techniques, and you click on this, and it takes you to the t tutorial. Okay, some some of them warned you that because it's the starter edition, some of them may not be possible. And this is using uh, samples that they have in the regular edition, which we of course don't have. But you'll know how to show the uh, waveforms. Okay, by clicking down here somewhere. Anyway, you can you can learn a lot just by reading it over. There it is. How to show view the waveforms. If you know your music really well, like your cello part and your piano part, you and listen to the audio track looking at the waveforms. After you use waveforms a little bit, it's, it makes it really easy to do because you can uh, you can court you know what each of these humps and bumps mean. You know what the sound is, like if it's your cello or if it's your piano. Okay, now we can close this up, reduce that, click the X. First thing we have to do is to import some media. I have two bars here, medium properties, and I'm going to import media, import, and in my videos library, in my videos, I have SMP, Serif Movie Plus Samples, which I keep things in. And we're going to use our fish clip. And I don't have any musical instrument clips. And a mockingbird singing. I'm going to hold down control. And then open both of those. You'll notice one of them is a Windows uh, media file, WMB file. And the other one's a MOVE file. One of them's widescreen. One of them isn't. Also notice that they play in place. Okay. And the next thing we have to import is we need a background to put these on. If you go to library, click the plus next to samples to open it and see where it says fills. Click that and you have some fills already here so you don't have to make your own. Some of these are animated. You put the cursor over them, you can watch them move depending upon you know what you want to do I love this one Whee! okay but that's a little busy for music so for right now why don't we just use a black to white effect and we're gonna drag this down to the video track because that's gonna be our background all backgrounds go in the video track okay click on project again here are our two videos we need to put them each on a separate track we only have one track left, the overlay track. We need another one. Right click on the overlay track. Click on insert video track. Now we've got two of them. We're going to put our fish clip on one and our mockingbird on the other one. In your case, it's going to be you playing the cello on one and you playing the piano on the other one. Notice everything's a, you know, a different length. You just click and drag, which is really easy to do with a still image uh, you cannot click and drag whoops you cannot click and drag out a video image because a video has a definite starting and end point so you can make this smaller for now you can drag it out again if you need to okay now when we play these you can hear both of them playing but we need to place them how do we do that You'll see a little down arrow in the upper left corner here. There's also a down arrow there. They have the exact same things in them. They're called attributes. I prefer using the one on the video. Click on it and then click on transform. And your video gets a grid around it. And you just click and drag. And then, oh no, this one's shorter than it should be. There we go. Now if you want to, oh that doesn't work. Okay, I'm going to put, you can put them opposite one another or not, it doesn't matter. 
Okay, you can move it over, you can put it halfway down, there we go. And because I'm on a laptop and don't have much room, over here's a little up arrow, I want to close that. Same thing on the fish clip, click the little down arrow, click transform. This time we're going to put the fish clip next to it. The fish clip happens to be widescreen, so we can make it a little bit smaller. You know, and this is really easy. Everything is click and drag. You can overlap them a little bit. And you can raise it up. You don't want to raise it up too much. Okay. Now I'm going to overlap them a little bit like that. And leave a little room around the edges. Now if you want to work on the this clip again, you have to go back and open it and click on Transform to give it the grid. And I want to move it up just a little bit. There we go. And I think I want to make it just a little smaller. There we go. Okay. Now let's close her up. Now, now we've got our videos. We've got them on a background. If we play them, here you go. That's all you have to do. We can hear both audios. Now this audio is a little scratchy and loud. You're going to want to sync your audios because you don't want, you know, you want your cello and piano parts of the piece you're playing to, uh, to, to be synced, to be coordinated. So what we're going to do is, it says, click that, there you go. And you can expand your audio track so you can see the waveform. Same thing down here. Over here, uh, to the left of the green dot, there's an up arrow. Push it, and then that allows you. Now, this one happens to be stereo. This one is mono. And unfortunately, you know, it's kind of hard to sync crowd noise. But you can sync them that way. You know, over here, click to place your bar. What if you want to change the volume? Click in your audio track, click over here on effects, add effect, and you get the audio effects. We want uh, channel volume. Gives you presets down here, channel volume. Click OK. Come up here to the properties bar, click on properties, and scroll down and you have your audio gain. So you can actually, you know, you can turn down the gain a little bit. And what else? Okay, that's about all we can do for that one. Now when you have a stereo clip, click on that one. Click on effects. Well, oh, add effect. I'm getting tired here already. Channel volume. You know there are other things you can do. Reverb and this and the other. Channel volume. Okay. And you want to let's select it. There we go. And we have parameters. You can change the left one and the right one uh, because it's stereo. And if you change them, it's for me. It's just I'm just gonna I'm gonna lower it five decibels minus five point oh. Backspace minus 5.0. Now, when you play it, I don't know, let me know. my poor bird, I lowered the gain on my bird. Effect, select the effect, and oh, the gain doesn't come back. So, anyway, you can. I'm going to increase his, uh, okay, now we play it. And so anyway, you can play between your piano and your cello audio. You can kind of play around with the volume. How do you sync them? Like I said, you, you play through and look at the waveforms for each piece of music. I'm assuming you know your pieces of music fairly well. And then what you have to do, basically, is you have to slide them around. You can put markers down. See this? 
let's say I have a right there and I want to place a marker I can insert a marker I can set a starter and end point etc I'm just going to insert a marker you can see it's yellow orange right now which means it's selected and then I want to coordinate this one with that marker let's say you know just slide them now to make it easier to slide up here where it's got a plus and minus Increase the size of these guys a little bit, and that makes it actually easier because a little bit of move, see, you can be, you can just be more exact. Okay, and then you can always go back to the beginning. Now, what if you don't like your background? Okay. Let's close up the audio here. One horrible thing about not having a monitor. What if I don't like this background? I want to change it. Right click in it. Delete it. Go back up here to media. Library. Fills. And let's put in. Let's put in this blue one. I'm going to slide the slider back here. And make everything a little smaller. By the way, if you just want everything to fit into what you can see, see this little icon here with the double-headed arrow, you just click it. Everything fits in. Then you can just slide this one out and make it this, whoops, same length as the rest. Let's move this one in. Your video can only be as long as your shortest clip. Okay. Well... I got a marker here. There we go. And when you make it longer, the animation goes slower. If you want the animation to go faster, you have to put in the clip multiple times. So right click copy, right click paste. Okay. Now when you're done and you've got everything set, you want to save it. Come up here to File, Export Movie, click on File. Uh, you have a number of choices. I usually just cho choose the Windows Media file and click Next. Uh, you'll notice over here it's got NTSC. When you first open it, it'll say 25.000 PAL. You need to change that by clicking Customize. Now, a number of my other videos, I show you how to do this. You click Customize. You get to change the frame rate to NTSC, which is what's used in the United States. And then you get to give that change a name, and it appears here under Custom. I made the change. I just called it US Video. You also have control of the render quality. There is one higher than high, and that's best. But it warns you that the best quality movie that you make is very slow. Um, not the movie slow, but doing it is slow. It takes a long time. So I use high, and I always get very, very good videos out of this. When you click finish, and it goes into the rendering process. Okay. And uh, I hope you have fun. If you have any questions, uh, you can post them again. And uh, have fun with this. It's really fun to use. It's easy to use.